Hey, boys and girls, it's time to start a new book for a new week. This is called Brave Girl, Clara and the Shirtwaist Makers Strike of 1909. Remember when we first started this unit, we talked about being an active citizen, how people get involved. And last week we learned about Rosa Parks and how she was an active citizen. She tried to create change, right? She stood up for something that she really believed in and felt strongly about. This character does the same thing. I want you to pay attention today at the illustrations, because remember we've talked how illustrations tell a lot about what's happening in the story, not just the words. And these happen to be really important illustrations throughout because we didn't live in 1909, right? We don't know what it was like then, but these illustrations can give us a glimpse. And this particular um, artist, her name is Melissa Sweet. She does some really neat things. So if you think you might want to be an illustrator or an author illustrator someday, um, pay attention to some of the elements that she uses. Okay, brave girl. Think about this right here. It's like real fabric. A steamship pulls into the harbor, carrying hundreds of immigrants and a surprise for New York City. So there's that steamship. The surprise is dirt poor, just five feet tall, and hardly speaks a word of English. Her name is Clara Lemlick. This girl's got grit and she's going to prove it. Look out, New York. So here's a picture of Clara and there's her family. And you can see all of these immigrants. I think you've probably heard that word before. People who come from a different country, right? To have a better life, to have some opportunity to start something new. You can see all of them, right? How they're dressed, some fancy, some not so fancy. Children, grown-ups, you can see the Statue of Liberty in the distance. So they are in a new country. They don't speak any English. Do you notice what the illustrator did here? What did she use to frame that picture? Right, those are stitches, right, from like a sewing machine. And this looks like it might be leather. Look what's behind here. It looks like some kind of a ticket, something like that in the background. Clara knows in her bones what is right and what is wrong. What's wrong begins a few weeks after the Lemlicks move into their tenement in America. No one will hire Clara's father. They will, however, hire Clara. That's right, Clara. Companies are hiring thousands of immigrant girls to make blouses, those are shirts, coats, nightgowns, and other women's clothing. They earn only a few dollars a month, but it helps pay for food and rent. So instead of carrying books to school, many girls carry sewing machines to work. Clara becomes a garment worker. Garments are clothes. It's like classifying clothes. Remember how we talked about classifying shapes? Garments are clothes, shirts, right? Pants, dresses, coats. Here's Clara. She's got her sewing machine. You can see all these people here. Lots of clothes hanging to dry. Okay, you're going to do some work with some vocabulary to learn a little bit more about some of these things in the story. From dawn to dusk, she's locked up in a factory. Rows and rows of young women bend over their tables, stitching collars, sleeves, and cuffs as fast as they can. Hurry up, hurry up, the bosses yell. Rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat, hisses Clara's machine. The sunless room is stuffy from all the bodies crammed inside. There are two filthy toilets, one sink, and three towels for 300 girls to share. So if you look at this picture, 
Okay, this is like a bird's eye view. If we were on the ceiling looking down, like when we do perimeter, right? And we look at the amount around, this is a bird's eye view of all these long skinny tables. All these little brown things are sewing machines. And on either side of the table is a young girl sewing. 300 girls. Looks like here is the boss. Looks like there's some workers in between, maybe standing there watching, making sure they're doing what they need to do. What do you think about that? Clara learns the rules. If you're a few minutes late, you lose half a day's pay. Let's look at that. Here's a clock, a little stopwatch. And then here is something called, um, it's like a time card. When a long time ago, you'd have to write down when you went to work and when you left and how much you got paid. So if you're late, you're gonna take half of your money. If you prick your finger and bleed on the cloth, you're fined. If it happens a second time, you're fired. So when you're sewing, right, you might poke yourself and then the fabric might get soiled. So then they're gonna fine you, make you pay money. If you do it again, they're gonna fire you. You're gonna lose your job. Finally, there's a lock. The doors are locked and you're inspected every night before you leave to be sure you haven't stolen anything from the factory. Think about right, looking at that lock. You have all these people in one space, two toilets in the bathroom, right, for 300 people. What do you think about working in a place like this? Remember, Claire is young. These are all girls. They hired the girls, but they won't hire her dad. So today, when you get into Google Classroom to do your assignment, you're going to have some work to do with vocabulary because there's a lot of really interesting and maybe new vocabulary that I want you to have a little bit of a heads up with so that you can understand the story more as we read it. And then I'm going to ask you um, a few questions as well.